everybody i am parna again with you all with a new topic do you know about the anatomy and functions of the occipital bone explained with the diagram the occipital bone is a trapezoid shaped bone that forms the posterior wall and the base of human skull body to me explain the anatomy diagram and functions of the occipital bone did you know when we note we use the atlanto occipital joint which is the joint located between the atlas vertebra c1 and occipital bone this joint helps in the flexion and extension of the neck the term cranium refers to the part of the skull that enclose the brain out of the 22 bones that forms the human skull eight bones form the cranium the cranial bones of the human body include the occipital bone parietal bone frontal bone temporal bone parietal bone spinoid bone and the ethmoid bone these bones perform the vital functions of the protecting the brain from damage in the event of trauma there are four major stricture's fibios joint that join the cranial bones these includes coronal suture suture that joins the frontal bone to the two parietal bone on each side lamboid suture suture that separates the occipital bone from the two parietal bones sagittal suture suture that extends from the lamboid to the coronal suture between the parietal bones and the squamous suture the suture that forms the boundary between the parietal and temporal bone on each side forming the posterior surface of the skull the occipital bone articulates with the two parietal bones spinoid bone two temporal bones and the atlas first cervical vertebra the term occipital is derived from the latin word occiput which in turn is derived from the prefix ob which means against and caput which means head the prominent occipital bone characterized of features include the external occipital protuberance and creased occipital condyle and the superior and inferior neutral lines occipital bone locations and functions the occipital bone is located at the lower section of the back of the skull it is convex shaped external and convex shaped internal it is divided into four regions these four regions surrounded the foramen magnum which is a large hole that is located at the center of the occipital bone the four region that are integral to the occipital bone anatomy include pisoccipital exoccipitalis two condylar section squama occipitalis lateral view of the skull at birth the aforementioned part develops separately and are joined by cartilage thereby forming a ring around the large opening called foramen magnum it is only around the age of 6 years that these four parts unite to form a single bone the squamous section which is formed by a convex posterior superior plate behind the foramen magnum makes a major part of the occipital bone the basilar section is located in the front of these foramen the two lateral section are located on either side of the foramen magnum the foramen magnum is located at the center of the occipital bone it acts as a passageway passageway for the spinal cord medulla oblongata becomes continuous with the spinal cord does it play a vital role in the communication between the brain and the spinal cord beside the medulla oblongata meaning subraconoid space the tonsils of the cerebellum and other anatomical structure passes through the foramen these includes ligaments apical ligaments of dane crookish form ligament of atlas and membrana tectoria anterior and posterior spinal arteries vertebral artibra and meningeal branches cn1 to 3 sympathetic plexus spinal vein spinal root of the accessory nerve etc the occipital bone provides attached for a number of muscles of the neck as well as the upper section of the back these includes longus capitis rectus capitis anterior rectus capitis lateralis rector capitis posterior major rector capitis posterior minor superior obliqueo semispinalis capitis sphalic splenius capitis occipital prefrontalis trapezius sternocleid mastoid squama the squama which is expanded plate that is located above and behind the foramen magnum is convex externally and concave internally the major features of this region include external surface 
located on the midline of the external surface the external occipital protuberance is a prominence that can be felt on touching it acts as a site attachment of trapezium muscle nuchal lines are curved lines or ridges on the external surface of muscles and ligaments of the neck and back attached to the skull these lines form as the stress on the bone in the areas where muscles attached to the skull causes them to develop raised bone four nuchal lines are present in the external surface of the occipital bone these include posterior view of the skull the highest nuchal line which extended on the either side for the external occipital protuberance to the mastoid process of the temporal bone is the site of attachment for gallio aponeurotica muscle that covers the upper part of the cranium the superior nuchal line which lies below the higher nuchal line serves as a site of attachment for the trapezius sternoid cleidomastoid and splenius capitus muscles the medial nuchal line which is also called external occipital crease begins at the external occipital protuberance and runs down to the foramen magnum it also serves as a site of attachment for the nuchal ligament that is present at the back of the neck extending lateral on the either side from middle of the medial and nuchal line is the inferior nuchal line that almost runs parallel to the superior nuchal line it serves as a site of attachment for the semispinalized capitis muscle internal surface the internal surface of the squamous part is concave in shape the cuticular eminence divides it into four facets concavity in a surface the internal occipital protuberance lies at the point of intersection of the four division the upper and the lower division are triangular and quadrilateral in shape respectively the upper two division accommodate the occipital lobes of the cerebrum whereas the lower two division accommodate the cerebellar hemisphere hemisphere of the cerebrum at the point of intersection of the four division of the cuticular eminence is the internal occipital protuberance grooves are present on the internal surface due to the presence of a dural venous cranial sinuses venous channel that drain blood from the brain to the jugulary foramen such as the superior sagittal sinus the transverse sinuses and the sigmoid sinus the angle of the union of the superior sagittal and transverse sinus is called trochlear herophily and it appears at the depressions on one or either side of the protuberance growths for the transverse sinus run horizontally for the life and rate of the internal occipital protuberance and continue into the indentation or grooves of the sigmoid sinus margins of transverse occipital sulcus serves as a site of attachment for the tentorium cerebellar compartment or fold created by the dura mater which is outermost membrane that encloses the brain the dura creates dural folds called flex cerebri and the tentorium cerebelli flex cerebri separates the right and left hemisphere of the brain whereas tentorium cerebelli separates the cerebrum that largest part of the brain in the anterior that comprises the two hemisphere for the cerebrum part of the brain that is situated above the medulla oblongata and beneath the cerebrum in the upper division to the right is to the groove that accommodates the rear part of the superior sagittal sinus to the